Colorado State University has released, new as of this morning, its first outlook for this year's hurricane season. Yeah, and the numbers do call for an above average season. You're looking at, at the numbers as we reveal them to you, the number of named storms, the forecast, the outlook from CSU. Now, this is their first look. They do provide another update to these numbers as we get a little closer to the season. 17 named storms are calling for, nine hurricanes. And of the hurricanes, we think four of them will receive that major hurricane uh, status. When we look at last year's number, as you know, um, it was a, a bit more than we dealt with. But we want to bring in Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross this morning. Brian, good morning to you. Um, I guess the first thing is, what do you make of the numbers that have been released by CSU this morning? Well, they're in line with the other agencies that have uh, put out numbers, agencies and universities and other research groups. And we have a situation this year that's really very different than, than the last couple of years. Because the last couple of years, we had this very warm uh, Atlantic, extremely warm Atlantic. So we would think that that would force the numbers higher with having a lot of extra energy. And we also had it in the Pacific, we had a well-defined La Nina, which we would affect, expect to force the numbers higher. And before that, we had an El Nino, we would expect to force the numbers lower and so forth. So we had these things that provide forcing on the numbers one way or the other. This year, it's much more mush. <laughs> in the Pacific, it's kind of in the middle. So no big forcing coming there. Part of the Atlantic and the Eastern Atlantic is actually uh, cool to to about normal the Caribbean and the Gulf are still very very warm so we have all these different conflicting uh, signals this year and so the net net of all that is they're saying okay a little bit more than normal but with higher than normal uncertainty because when you don't have any significant uh, issues forcing the numbers one way or the other, just the weather pattern over a certain two week or three week period can uh, push the storms up or down or change what happens and uh, we can't forecast that uh, well in advance. Um, it's just one of those kind of years with everything uh, near the center to maybe a little more uh, conducive than uh, normal is the way it looks, at least right now, but it is the spring, and there's a thing called the spring predictability barrier in the Pacific, so that even keeps us from having uh, any kind of real certainty what's going to happen with the El Nino La Nina. It is interesting. I was looking at your write-up, the one that you emailed to all of us this morning, Brian, and also yeah. want to note you are currently at the Tropical Weather Conference that is in South Padre, right? Yeah. So um, you're there, right. uh, and, and we know the Gulf was very active, to your point. Uh, it's, it's warm. Yep. It is warm. It is usually warm. When you talk about some of the other factors that we have to look at, the African monsoon, watching the pattern, the wave patterns that get generated out of Western Africa, watching the Saharan dust. So there's so many things that have yet to come into focus, right? So I guess when we look at these forecasts, and we know CSU will also update the forecast, correct? We get the outlook now, and then is it in June? that we get the second one? Yeah, in June and July and August, they, mm -hmm. they updated. And, you know, August, you say, well, wow, the hurricane season's way underway. But by far, most of the important activity happens after the beginning of August. So, and just, just the nature of forecasting is it takes until June before we get past this issue of the spring predictability barrier, it's called, when the wind regime kind of establishes itself over the Pacific and we just get better forecasts. So uh, this time of year, we have some indications, but they always have these big maybes on them. And this year, the maybes are bigger than normal because we don't have the strong forcing uh, in either the Atlantic or the Pacific at this point. And those other factors you talked about, Marissa, uh, they're generally only forecastable over fairly short time periods of two to three weeks. So uh, we got to wait and see how what happens in Africa develops and affects the hurricane season. And Brian, an another question too, because in, in the presentation that Phil Klotzbach offers with Colorado State University, they always reference past years and analogs. Um, not sure if, if, if you heard that part of the presentation, but a couple of the years include 2017, which we know produced some significant hurricanes, Harvey, Irma, and Maria. 2011 was Irene and, and Lee. Um, with it, as you had said, being a bit of a mess, it's hard to latch on to any of these things. Nonetheless, sometimes analogs give us an idea of where researchers are currently thinking things could evolve into. 
Well, what, what that's telling you is that when you have this kind of neutral position, uh, neutral condition in the Pacific that isn't pushing the season to one way or the other, the season can go either way. 2005, that's the Katrina, Rita, Wilma, uh, Dennis, Emily season. That was a neutral year. So you can have uh, anything happen, but you know, we've also had pretty quiet years. And like you say, 2017 uh, was an, is an analog-y kind of season, and we had these mega, season, mega storms, including Irma and Harvey and uh, uh, Maria, right? We had, is that 2017, yes, Maria? Yes, Well, Maria. in any case, we had a very, yes, it was, right? It was a crazy year, but yet it was because it was one of these years that we really didn't have good predictability early in the year. So the predictability is not constant year by year as the thing, and this year looks like a fairly low predictability a year because of the lack of, of significant forcing. You know, it's always tough. People always want answers, right? And, and um, things will come into focus as we get right. further into the year. I, I also just appreciate you pointed out, you know, some of the bigger impacts we had this year, Helene being the notable one, were further inland. And so it's not just along the coast that we have this risk for hurricanes. You said if you're in striking distance to Hurricane Coast, so yeah. the need to pay attention even further inland, it is something to note, even as we had. Yeah, into Marissa, this here on the Gulf Coast, here I'm on the Gulf Coast today in South Padre Island, mm -hmm. Texas, and everybody is asking the question, when are the hurricanes? Hurricane's going to start going somewhere else besides in the Gulf. Gosh. You know, and so it's, uh, and there is just no real answer to that question, unfortunately. And bottom line is, hurricane season is coming, and we all, yeah. we live in a hurricane zone, we have to be prepared. That's it.